Pat and I were together from the very first episode of Coronation Street. In that episode, she brought to life a character that reached out and touched the heart of the nation. She became a pillar of Coronation Street, helping to cement it into its place in history. She loved the character of Elsie Tanner and guarded it jealously. Pat was a wonderfully extravagant and generous person, much loved by us all. Tony Warren, a lifelong friend and the originator of Coronation Street, had this to say about Pat. Pat had star quality. She could reach out to an audience so that they knew her, but also felt she was talking directly to them. As a friend, she was fiercely loyal, frequently impossible, and I wouldn't have missed knowing her for anything. Here she is in some of her many memorable performances. Come on, Dennis Tanner, where is it? Where's what? Don't come here and with me. You know as well as I do. I don't know what you're talking about. Two bob gone out of my purse. That's what I'm talking about. Well, what are you looking at me for? It's nothing to do with me. Oh, well, I suppose some Mayfair cat burglar called in and nicked it. Come here. Now, look. Let's get this straight. Not an hour ago, you asked me for two bob for cigarettes. And you wouldn't give it me, we know. So you're stuck to going in a lady's handbag. Just listen it. A lady. Is that what you crack on you are these days? Fine son. A fine son you are. That tongue of yours will get you on one of these oh, days. Oh, give over. Luke, you've lost two bob. I don't know where it is. What am I supposed to do about it? Get work. Get work. That's what you're supposed to do about it. Change record, will you? Did you go down to the labour today? I'm not due till tomorrow. You know what your trouble is, don't you? You just don't want work. Did you bother to look through the adverts in the newspapers? What papers? We only get the one in the morning. There's nothing in that you know there isn't. Oh, you could have gone down to that reading room, couldn't you? Here am I, working yourself to death, and you can't even stir yourself to go and look through a newspaper. What sort of job would they have for me? There's plenty of jobs for them that take the trouble to look for them. Yeah, and they ask you what experience you've had. Well, you've had experience. Not the right kind, though. Just drop it. No, I won't. It's the same every Luke! time. Luke! You know as well as I do why I can't get a job. Been out of that place seven weeks now. Oh, don't let's wrap it up. If you mean prison, say it. Everyone else does. You can't go on like this. Well, what am I supposed to? Just tell me that. Oh, why are it in me that I have a son like you? I suppose you'd rather have me like Kenneth Barlow at number three. And what's wrong with him? Let me tell you something. He'll have no trouble getting a job because he's got it up here in the upper story, and that's where it counts. I sometimes wish we were more like them Barlows. At least they're not rowing all the time. Now, what have I done? Sit down. Eh? I said sit down. Well, come on. We're waiting for your sister. What for? Never mind. If you'll find out, I don't bore me cabbages twice. You'll find out when she gets here. Go on, play the mystery woman. Hi, I'll play the mystery woman. I'll play Hamlet Noel in a minute. Was he knocking? Come in here, will I you? I can't stop. I'm fed. He can wait. Come in. Well, that's a change, any row. What's up? Sit down. Hey? I said sit down. Can't you understand plain English? What's up? Now, Go on, we're sitting comfortable. Have you two been up to any of your old tricks? What are you talking about? Have you two been trying to make a fool of me? You don't need no help for that. Shut up, you. What are you on about? Have you been writing any letters? That's what I'm on about. To you? Yes, to me. Well, I haven't, and he can't write. Of course I can. Uh, oh, well, perhaps you can read. Read that. Dear Mrs. Tanner, it is quite... Oh, get it here. Now, listen to me. And listen to me very carefully. There's a lot of people around here that don't think much of us as a family. Sometimes I don't think much of us myself, but God help me, you're all I've got. And I'm all you've got. What about Ivan and Paul? Oh, go on, turn your back on I'm me. I'm not turning me back on you. It isn't very often I ask you for help. I can manage most things by myself. I took a lot of slanging in my time and I can give back as good as I get, but this hey, time... Hey, she it... were talking about playing English. Shut up, you. Dear Mrs. Tanner, it is quite obvious that you do not know the law of the land. For if you did, you would know that you are not allowed to go messing about with men until you are absolutely divorced. Certain people would like to know what happened in Blackpool Illuminations between you and a certain gentleman who wears a uniform. And this information will be passed on if you do not put your house in order. This... This is a warning. If you think I don't know what I'm talking about, you've got another... Hey, Albert. Here a second. Tell him who L.C. Tanner thought wrote that letter. Annie Walker. Mm -hmm. Get away. It's a story I'm sending here. He had a blazing row the other day, you know. Well, that was so, but Annie wouldn't do a thing like that. Oh, it's hard to think who would, isn't it? What do you think about it, then, Ina? Well, from the taste of it, as I say, there's some fallout in this beer. You can't tell me it all drops in milk. I thought it was something to do with the cows. No, I mean about the big thing that's going on round here. You know. Oh, I know, all right. 
drop a tidbit like that down this street and you can't get by for flapping ears. But if you really want to know, I'm holding myself aloof. You what? I'm holding myself aloof. Oh, dear. And what are you all daring about? Um, what was it you said? You know, you've been getting steadily worse ever since you had that slate on your head. Did you take them pills I give you? Oh, yes, Ina, I was most particular. Do you feel any better, do you think? No, they had a rather peculiar effect on me. Oh, I see. They made you feel normal, Miss Otty. No, no, very peculiar. I don't really, I don't like to say what it was. Oh, they shouldn't have done that to me. There was nothing to do that as far as I know. Oh, well, perhaps it was just me. Ah, oh, well, perhaps it was. At any rate, you've got plenty to be thankful for, haven't you? Oh, well, why, Ina? Well, you'll never get a little like that one else, Itana, lad. No. And I can't see you tomorrow night, either. Oh, no, Bill, you mustn't. No, you mustn't. Listen to me, will you? I, I, I've had a letter, a nasty one. No, I don't know it's from. Oh, it was all about us and the divorce not coming through and me having to watch myself until it does and, and all that. No. No, it's all right. It is going through. I, th that's why I went to see Miss Solicitors. Yeah. Well, you see now why you mustn't come down and spoil everything. No, promise me you won't. I know that, but promise me. Yeah. Of course I will. No. No. Of course I don't need you. Goodbye. Flipping liar. If you'll take my tip, you'll keep your voices down. Well, we was only discussing it, Gina. After all, it is a free country when all's said and done. You'll find out how free it is if any walker catches you. Well, perhaps we'd better talk about the illuminations. Aye, and perhaps we'd better not and all. If you think I've forgotten what happened the other night, Minnie Cole, well, then you've got... What can I get you, Mrs. Turner? I don't want anything, thank you, Mrs. Walker. I received this letter this morning. I'd like to know what you've got to say about it. Now, no, look here. Never you mind. Here. Wait a minute, Jack. I'd like to say two things about this letter, Mrs. Tanner. In the first place, I wouldn't soil my hands writing such a thing. And in the second place, I'm downright disgusted that anyone should think I could. And while I'm talking, I'd like to say something else. I stood in this public house tonight and I've heard my name linked with this letter not once but a dozen times. I've seen my own husband and my own barmaid try to keep the customers from telling me. Now listen, Annie Lowe. No, no. I'll go on, Jack, please. I've been accused in public and I've a right to defend myself in public. I did not write that letter, Mrs. Tanner. And if you'll take a tip from me, you'll go back home and pull yourself together. And when you've done that, perhaps you'll have the decency to come back here and apologize. Come on, Elsie, love. Leave me alone. You've been behaving pretty funny lately, haven't you? Hey, now, be careful. Careful, careful. Whoever wrote me, that wasn't careful. They didn't care what it did to me, did they? You're all the same, a lot of you. Doreen. Yes, Mrs. Walker. Get a quarter bottle of brandy and take it round to Mrs. Tanner. Better take this with you as well. All right, yeah. Do carry on drinking, please. We can't afford to let this affect business. Good evening, ladies. You should be supping in the other bar. You'd have been here plenty long enough to know that. <coughs> Say what you like, you know, but I think Annie handled that very, very well indeed. Right. Hey, but mind you, if she puts the same fight up over this decorating lark, I think we're going to have quite a battle over it, aren't we? <laughs> I thought you'd like to know. It wasn't Mrs. Walker who sent that letter. Oh, we know that, love. Yes, but I thought you'd like to be certain. Ina Sharple said as how it wasn't her. She wouldn't explain how she knew, but she was very definite. Excuse me. What's up with him? Hey, your pet is at you down a mile. So, somebody'll have a cheek through. Got more important things to think about this morning. Are you not still on about her? Aren't I? Just you wait and see. Well, look, Mum, you've got no proof. It was Ina Sharples who wrote that letter. You heard what Ivan said. He said Ina Sharples said that Annie Walker didn't write that letter and she knew it. You know, you heard him say that, yes, didn't you? Yes, but he. But nothing. Ina Sharples has opened a lying gob too far this time and she's got to know about it right now. Where is she? Dear lady, please, this is not 
unseemly. We're just about to conduct a religious service. Oh, she's inside, is she? Hiding behind her religious principles, just like her, the hypocritical old bag. Oh, come, 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 come. We mustn't have such profanity on the Sabbath, or indeed any other day. Mrs. Sharples has gone to visit her sister. Oh, more likely gone to polish her arms. <laughs> she said she would be back about midday. Oh, did she? Well, in that case, I'm going. And you can tell her I've been. Oh, and while you're about it, you can tell her I'll be back. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Tanner. Is Lovely it? morning. I haven't noticed. I know exactly how she felt. I know exactly why she walked in here and behaved as she did. She's not a well-educated woman yet, you've got to face that. And when that sort get hit, they only know one thing. That's to hit back and they don't care who they hit either, they just lash out. Oh, well, I reckon they want pity. Well, so do I, if you'd hear me out, that's what I'm going to say. I am sorry for the woman, I'm very sorry for her. The fact that I've had advantages she hasn't doesn't mean I don't understand her. It's all the more reason why I should. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm glad you feel that way about it. Hey, Annie, it's uh, Mrs. Tanner. Indeed. Tell her we're not open yet. I know that, Mrs. Walker. That's not what I've come for. I'd like to have a word with you. Yes? Uh, about last night, I want to say thank you very much for the brandy. Oh, it was... you needn't have trouble. I should have done the same for anyone who was in the state you were in. Yes, I know that. And I, I've not come for that, though. I was grateful. I... Mrs. Walker, I'm very sorry. I should think so. I, I don't know what come over me. I, I knew perfectly well that you wouldn't have written a letter like that. I was just... I was just so upset, I didn't know what I was doing. Well, I suppose you know half Coronation Street heard what you went on, quite apart from my own feelings in the matter. I'll apologise in front of them all, if you There's like. There's no need to. I'm quite capable of accepting an apology by myself. Then do you? Yes, I do. Well, right then. Good morning, Mrs. Tanner. Good morning, Mrs. Walker. Good morning. Well, I'll go to our house. I thought you were sorry for her. Well, it's one thing telling you, but it's another thing telling her. I don't want her coming in accusing me, you know, every time something goes wrong. Eey, and they say men make wars. Oh, well, we have the sense to fight with words, love. That way, no one gets killed. Oh, good morning, Mr. Sharples. You're back, I see. Sherlock Holmes rides again. How did you spot that? I have a message for you from Mrs. Tanner. S-W-A-L-K, I suppose. Beg your pardon. Sealed with a loving kiss. Oh, you live in the world of your own man, so you start... What'd she want? She said she wanted to talk to you. Well, I didn't think she was coming to bring me a bunch of flowers. Did you mean she'd come here to the mission? Don't tell me she's been converted. <laughs> no, uh, she was... Uh, she was knocking on the vestry door. Knocking rather belligerently, if I may say so. In fact, I thought she'd do it some damage. She, uh, She said it was rather urgent. Oh, did she? Well, I can't help that. I have a very important appointment to keep, and I have no intention of breaking it for Mrs. Elsie Tanner. She was very upset. Oh, go on. You're bringing tears to my eyes. Don't worry. She'll not get maggots in being she's kept waiting. I've no, she's preserved herself well enough for years. But and as you're always the first to say, Mrs. Swindley, business before pleasure, Mrs. Chappell. Business before pleasure. Hello. Hey, you're back early. Dinner's not ready yet. I haven't come back for dinner. Well, what is it, Ivan? What's wrong? Mum, you shouldn't have said those things about Mrs. Sharples. Mr. Walker told me all about I have. it. You come back starting more bother. I only said what was right. Linda, I'm trying to stop bother. Oh. Well, Mrs. Sharp is at the Rovers now, and, and her friend's telling her all about it. Oh, she's in there, is she? Right. Ma'am, I'm finishing my cigarette. Oh, now look what you've done. I thought this was supposed to be a respectable house. I don't have the face to call it that and allow such language to be used on the premises. I should like to point out, Mrs. Sharples, that I wasn't on the premises when the incident occurred. Unfortunately, I'd gone round to Mrs. Lindley's. Otherwise, you can rest assured it would never have happened. I'm not interested whether you were here or not. All I know is that my good name's been sullied, and as you and your husband are the licensees of these premises, I shall hold you partly responsible for any action I may take. Oh, but, Henry, it wasn't Mrs. Walker as said it. It were Elsie Tanner. She knows that. No, I've not forgotten. What are you going to do, Ina? She's going round to see that Elsie Tanner. Yes, when I'm ready. I've never been one to turn me back on a row, and I'm blowed if I'm going to allow it to interfere with my pleasure. Right. 
right. Hey, come on, Daddy, come on. They're just getting an air flying out uh, there. Well, they're fighting with double barrel rolling pins. I'm not kidding you. They're dead serious. You're not telling me, and I don't want to get mixed up in it. I'm no stomach for women fighting. Oh, come, come on, Daddy, come on. Hey, there, lass, you better stop where you are. Here, you're not going, are you? Here, I wouldn't I know myself. Know. Still, as your past is to blame for what's happened, right. perhaps I'd better go and see if I can put things right. Come on, Dora. Here, what do you mean, Dora? But I've been no good. It's a well known fact. People have been talking about you for years. Oh, I'd expect you to know something like that. Every lying bit of gossip that goes about what you don't know you make up. We don't need sewers around here. We've got Tina Sharples. Ah, I got something wrong with a woman that can't hang on to her husband. At least mine wasn't carried out feet first. What do you mean by that, eh? What do you mean by that? Are you listening to this? What weren't you as witnesses after this? It's no secret round here that you're lashing to death of that fish. I come all this in the cellar, I'm me too. She done it's now. not what she's done, it's what she might do. She's having a slanging match in the street with Ian Sharples. Knives and I go back to the Rovers and I can't leave the baby. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Do you put it out there and stop him. Who, me? Oh, Dennis, this is serious. Yeah, well, keep your hair on and stop worrying. She can look, look after herself now, man. Oh. Tell you, I don't like it. Oh, it had to happen sooner or later. It's oh. clear the air anyway. Well, why didn't somebody oh, stop her? Well, they never do. They just stand back till the fighting starts. Yeah, no, they haven't come to that yet, but they will do it if yeah. someone doesn't stop them. Well, just look at everybody. For anything that matters, they'll be at home watching the telly. I've listened to you talking as long as I can, but this time I've held myself back out of respect for your age, but this time I'm going to land you one so help me. No. That's right. Go on. Strike a poor old defenceless woman. That's just about your level, Elsie Tanner. But before you raise your hand and damn yourself forever, if you haven't already done it, you'll listen to me for a minute or two. I know all about that letter, and personally I have the slightest doubt that everything in it is out but God's own truth. You think on this, Elsie Tanner. I know plenty about you. I know plenty about you that you don't think I know. I could have written a full-length book about you, let alone a letter, but if I had written it, if I had written it, it wouldn't have come anonymous. Oh, no. I've never been afraid to stand behind my own beliefs. If I had written the flaming thing, and if I'd Ina Sharp was in big black letters at the bottom of it, well, you know it! I'll go on, stand there and deny it. Ah, oh, listen, Elsie, you got it out of your system. Come on in and have a drink, there's a good girl. Ah, oh, come on, ladies, it was only a misunderstanding, wasn't it, really? Why not kiss and make friends, then? Well, make friends anyway. Dennis, take me over. Yeah, come on, I can. Man. Oh, he sent me off your husband. Oh, did he? Yeah, insisted. Oh, very nice. Oh, I'm glad you approve. Mind, it's not everybody's cup of tea. No? Oh, nothing personal, of course. <laughs> of course. No, but it's, uh... Well, it's not in keeping, is it? In keeping with what? This street. Like trying to make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. Oh, no, I agree with Stan. You know, you might as well keep your money in the bank. I mean, as for installing folder rolls like pink <laughs> bathroom suites. Yeah, well, like I said, everybody to his taste. Do you know, Ella, that's the first sensible thing you've said yet. This is to my taste, and I see nothing wrong in making the place where you live look nicer if you can. Ah, oh, well, you wasn't always of that persuasion, though, was you? I can remember when this place was like a... Like a what? Well, um... Shabby, shall we say? Well, it's not shabby now. And might I add, it's a darn sight better than a lot of middens round this street. I hope you're not referring to mine. If the cat fits, wear it. What about all them alterations my stand did last year? What alterations? Well, like, uh, like a serving hatch. Serving hatch that was a flaming barn door. Yeah, and that's not a flipping bath. It's phonographic, is that? Well, at least I won't be keeping coal in it, will I? No, you'll be keeping some grannier than coal in it. Yourself. Now, listen to me, spiky bones. You watch your tongue. This is my house. What difference does that make? I'll show you what difference. Get out! Hello. Having a nice little chat, are we? You know, the woman I once thought I was not there anymore. I keep looking at myself from the outside. Seeing myself as... as other people do. Yeah, well, it's never the same, is it? It's lousy. <laughs> Terrifying. Just a matter of coming to terms with yourself. What have I got to come to terms with? Oh, come on, else. I mean, you've got friends. Good job. You're still an attractive woman. For a good liar, you're a lousy liar. Yeah, well, you know, when you get yourself done when up... When I get myself, myself done up, what? You know what I look like when I get done up, shall I tell you? Like a clapped-out old tart. Oh, come on, Elsie. Oh, when I get myself done up. Got myself done up last night, as you call it. I didn't think I looked too revolting. 
went into town, had a coffee. Then I went to Miss Bell. It was empty, it was early, and I sat there looking at my watch. Like I was waiting for somebody, like you do when you're on your own. Then this fellow asked me to have a drink. Bernard. He seemed a pleasant enough chap. He was on his own. I was on my own. And? He asked me to go up to his hotel room. <laughs> Don't tell me you were shocked. He thought I was on the game. He took it for granted and so did the old puff behind the bar. There was a bit of a scene. He asked me to leave. Chipped out. Yeah, all the same. I mean, uh, a woman alone uh, in a bar. I mean, I shouldn't blame the bloke too much. I mean, it's a mistake. Do you mistake every woman you see on her own in a bar to be a pro? Me? Well, no, I mean, but... But, uh... but I was. Too much makeup. Too much cleavage. Too much scent. Too much everything. Looking worn out and a bit desperate. That's the way he saw me. And that's the way I was. You're dead right. An easy mistake to make. Forget it. Don't let it bug you. I mean, it's not worth... Worth breaking me heart over a little thing like that. Well, I'm not. Not just that. The old lousy rotten mess I laughingly call my life. The cock-up I've made of it. The waste. I walked down that street last night, pouring with rain, crying my eyes out for a girl I once knew who had guts and hope. Only she's dead now. And I don't. I don't know quite when it was. She died. <laughs> Let them look. Let them see what they can. I care not if I look stupid. I've been struck by an arrow from Cupid. Let them look at a happy, happy man. Hey, look me over. If you'll only get up and yell! Hey, look me over! 